Hello, everyone, and welcome to our free webinar, Learn All About MSM Masters in Management and MBA Programs. My name is Donka, and I'm the moderator of this webinar on behalf of PrepAdvisor. Today, you have the unique opportunity to learn more about um, Master in Management degree as well as, as MBA programs and uh, how they can expand your knowledge and open doors to success in international business career. Our presenters are Oliver, Oliver Olson and Dave Kass. Keep in mind that you can send your questions during the entire webinar by typing them in the chat box. And after the presentation is over, our speakers will take time to give you a detailed answer. So we'd like to, to check the sound now. Is everything okay? Great. Okay, thank you. All right, everything is set. Oliver, you can start with the presentation now. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining this uh, webinar um, about the MSM program for the uh, Masters in Business Administration and our Masters in Management. My name is Dave Kass, and I'm the Director of Education here at MSM. And I'll be joined by one of our uh, lecturers here, Oliver Olson, who will be talking in much more detail about uh, the courses themselves and the information that will be given to be able to, to join our courses. Um, what I'm hoping is that it will be informative, uh, interesting for you, and then at the end of the presentation, we'll have a period where we'll both myself and Oliver will be here so that we can answer any questions. So I'll now hand over to Oliver for his presentation. All right, thank you, Dave. <clears throat> so as Dave presented, uh, I'm a lecturer in marketing and strategy here in our MBA and MM programs. So I'm going to switch over to our screen so you can follow along with us in today's uh, presentation about Maastricht School of Management. So hopefully you should all be seeing my screen now. And let's tell you a bit about the school. What we try to do in these webinars is not repeat things that you probably have already looked at at your own, because if you're taking the time to join us for this webinar, I assume that you've already looked at our website, you know a little bit about MSM. So we'll try to highlight some of the most important features and differentiators about our program. So MSM, we're proud to say, is one of the oldest business schools in the Netherlands. In fact, the longest running uh, MBA program, we're now in our 34th year of running the MBA, which is uh, quite a lifespan for the MBA product itself, because it's only been in the last 20 years especially in Europe, that the MBA has become a popular degree program. So we consider ourselves one of the uh, mature players in this market, and in the Netherlands as well as in Europe. Currently, we have more than 42 education programs, and that includes with our partners around the world, which I'll talk about more in a future slide. We concentrate on graduate management education. So we do not do undergraduate. This is the high-level stuff. This is for the MBAs the Master of Management. We do a Master of Science in cooperation with Erbe Teha Aachen University in Germany. We do a DBA, not only here in Maastricht, but to several partners around the world, and in non-degree executive education. We are proud to be international and multi-accredited. So our accreditations, which is the external validation of the management education, comes from AMBA, which is one of the world's most respected MBA accreditation institutes out of the UK. We have two US accreditations with IACBE and ACBSP. We also have the Dutch accreditation for our program, the NVAO, NVAO as well as an institutional accreditation from the Austrian-based ASEA. Rankings, I know, are important to many of you, so we like to point those out. We're currently ranked number two in the Netherlands by Ed Universal, as well as number 11 in Western Europe for our MBA program. In addition, our online MBA and executive MBA has recently been ranked as tier one status in the top 20 by CEO Magazine. So we feel that we're uh, happy with our validation, both from accreditation agencies that validate the quality of education and what we're delivering, as well as the external newspapers and other specialists in in giving rankings. Finally, we uh, also feel that we're quite innovative and it's important in the business world to be always changing, being up to date on what's happening. It's, you'll see as we look at the curriculum of the MBA that management education is not like the sciences, it's not like math, 
it's not like English literature that's going to stay pretty much the same as we look back historically. But the MBA and the master management needs to change and innovate every year, every day when we go into teach, we're innovating. And AMBA has recognized us twice in the last few years for being one of the most innovative teaching institutes in management education globally. One way that we differentiate ourselves is our partnerships and the way we educate, uh, organize our education. I emphasized in the title of this slide, partners, because these aren't just schools that we have a letter to work with or to have some exchanges with. These are true partners. All of the universities or the countries you see listed here are locations where MSM has an active ongoing degree partnership where students in those locations are registered for the MSM program. They have mobility, and you as a student here in, in Maastricht, you would benefit from that in several ways. First off, our lecturers actually travel to these locations. I've just returned from China teaching last month, and the next month I'll be going to Azerbaijan to teach our students. And what this means is that when you attend your lectures here in Maastricht, you're also getting the benefit of the insights, which are up to date and current from each of those lectures as they travel around. The other advantage you have is that you can interact with students from those programs because students from those locations also come here to Maastricht. We have students from Azerbaijan and China and Hungary and Iran and Kazakhstan and many of these other countries that actually come here to Maastricht and interact with you. So your student experience is not just with the students in class in your own program, but also the interaction with these students that are coming and visiting from our partner campuses. Also, our business partners are a very important part of what we're doing. Our viewpoint about management education is we're not delivering an MBA to you as our customer, but actually we're delivering you to the market as our final product. That's the reason you're investing in your education, because we expect that you want to either start your own business when you're done with your studies or be employed by one of these businesses globally or here locally. And so we have some excellent business partners and we stay in constant contact with them. In fact, Dave, who you met earlier, was visiting one of these partners this morning to find out what does the market looking for from our students and what can we do to prepare students to work in this marketplace. Another important aspect of Master School of Management is our alumni network. Over the last 65 years of our lifespan, we have alumni network of more than 20,000 in 100 different countries. So this is a network that you become a part of. When you study at Maastricht School of Management, you're here for one year or possibly two to three years, depending on the program you choose. But you become a part of our alumni network for a lifetime. So we have tools in order for you to stay connected to them. We have a website that's exclusively just for students and alumni to reconnect. So you can continue to take advantage of that network, not only while you're a student, while you're studying, but after you get back into the business world to either help grow your own business or to find new opportunities for yourself. Another thing that we feel differentiates Maastricht School of Management is this really cool region in which we live. You can see in the map there that even though we're in the Netherlands, we're closer to Brussels than we are to Amsterdam. We're about 100 kilometers from Brussels and Dusseldorf and Köln and about 200 kilometers from Amsterdam. But what makes this unique is this is a place in Europe called the Euregio, with the EU region of Aachen, Liège, and Hasselt. And it feels less like the Netherlands and more like just the heart of Europe. You walk out into the street here, you'll find students and residents speaking German, Dutch, English, French, all equally well. And it's uh, really a uh, coming together place. And as you see in the background at the opening was the bridge. We feel like this is a community based on bridges and bridging cultures and bridging people from all these different regions. Limburg province is an especially beautiful province. It's unlike the rest of the Netherlands, also geographically and visually. We have hills here, we have beautiful rivers. It's uh, not your stereotypical Dutch, and actually it is just uniquely Maastricht. We also have some special industries that we focus on. So we train people from all different industries, but some of the industries that you might find especially interesting is we have a strong and vibrant sports economy with uh, cycling and football, and hockey and many other sports that are developed here. We have a strong medical and life sciences. If we have uh, industries across the street from us that are based in the medical and life sciences, we have the medical and hospital right across the street from us. 
There's a strong chemical industry, services are growing, and agro industry. So regardless of which area you work in, there's a lot of opportunities for you during your studies as well as after your studies. So we know that we have coming to today's webinar two different types of students. We have those that are looking for the MBA program and some that are interested in the Master of Management program. I'm going to briefly outline both of these programs and tell you the differences and some of the highlights. The MBA program actually comes in three different formats. We have our full-time MBA, which is a one-year intense learning opportunity. We have our executive MBA, which is a multi-year opportunity for a different demographic and then newly launched last year is our online MBA. All of these share the same curriculum in common, which we'll talk about on the next slide. The full-time MBA, as I said, is 11 months to 12 months full stop program. You stop your work because this is a full-time job. In fact, it's more than a full-time job in order to fit in this traditional two-year MBA into an intense one-year MBA. There's four days of class as the structure. It's one class at a time, four to five days of class, followed by seven days in which you can study and then submit your final assignment. Then you start your next course. So it's very intense. The demographic tends to be young managers with five to 10 years work experience, between 28 and 33 years old approximately. And more than 90% of the students in this class are truly international, multinational. We have our executive MBA, which is designed more for working professionals in the region. Now, in fact, I say designed for working professionals of the region, but we found that our international nature has continued as we launched the Executive MBA a few years ago, where more than 60% of our students are either flying in from another part of the world, uh, Morocco, Dubai, Poland, uh, Tanzania, Switzerland, for example. And we also have many expats, international students that live or work here in the Netherlands or the region that continue their studies in the Executive MBA format. So this is a truly international, even in the executive MBA. This is designed to last two years or 24 months, but you can extend it up to four years as needed in case your work or life brings you to miss some of the modules or courses. This is a modular format where there's eight modules throughout your studies over two years. Each module meets for one week, four times per year, except for the specialization module in your second year, which is two weeks or 13 days. Then you have 11 weeks between each module to do your work, get back to catch up with your family life or your business life, and prepare for your next module. This demographic tends to be a little bit older. These are people that are at a point in their career where it doesn't make sense for them to quit their job and get all the benefits and advantages of the full-time uh, one-year program. Then we have the third option, which is the online MBA, which is also a approximately 27 month program, which can be extended if you have to miss a module. This is also for working students. This is a similar demographic that we see in the executive MBA. These are working professionals in their early 30s, late 40s, extended up to that. These are in modules that last six weeks at a time. So it's one thing that we like to make clear in the online MBA is it follows a similar format the same curriculum as our other programs. The flexibility comes in the location, but it does follow a strict schedule, and you have flexibility on turning in assignments and following the schedule, but it is one course at a time. The online MBA does have two specializations if you want to do it fully online, which would be accounting and finance, and international business and sustainable development. But as I'll show you in some of the coming slides, you have the option to take some of your courses live with our full-time MBA or executive MBA. Here's briefly the curriculum. And as I said at the beginning, I'm not going to repeat things that you can find on your own as you've been preparing, but I will shortly give the overview of what the curriculum is because all three of the formats that I showed you share this curriculum, you, which gives us flexibility between formats because students in any of those formats can take courses as needed in one of the other formats. So if you're an executive MBA, for example, and I'm teaching the marketing course this coming October, and you cannot make it to that class because of a business trip or some other reason, you have the option to make up for that marketing class in, by coming to the full-time MBA program for a week, by taking it online when it comes in the online schedule, or by attending anywhere in our global location. So there's many options 
to make up for courses that you have to miss for one reason or another. And that's where the flexibility comes in, in the same curriculum. As you can see here, this matches the eight modules that we have. Is you, you have understanding finance, developing business, business research tools, creating value, strategic orientation, changing world, and global responsibility. Those are our seven regularly scheduled modules. Then the specialization module takes place in July of each year, and I'll tell more about that in the coming slides. All of the MBA formats end with a final assessment where you have a choice between a business plan, a consulting project, or a more traditional academic thesis. I will get to the specializations after I tell you about the Master of Management. And the reason is because Master of Management students also have an option to take part in the specialization. The Master of Management, unlike the MBA, is designed for a slightly younger audience. In fact, the MBA requires at least three years work experience and our class should have on average five years for the accreditors to accredit that program. The Master of Management though is designed for those that have no work experience or very little, one to three years work experience. The Master of Management is also a one-year program. It's designed to be a full-time program, slightly less intensive. Instead of 70 European credits, as the other program is, it has 60 credits, but it follows a similar schedule where you have one class, four days in a row, with a week of study and assignment, and then repeat. These are demographics tend to be 23 to 28 years old, and again, 90% 90, 90 of the students are international from around the world. So, specializations. We've made specializations a special month here in Maastricht. Every July, we bring together students from around the world to choose from a variety of specializations. So, all the specializations run over a two-week period every July. And this is attended by the full-time program students at the end of their one year. It's attended by the executive MBA students in the middle of their second year and it's attended optionally by online students who want to take the specialization in person instead of one of the two offered online. It's also open for students from outside of MSM. We have students joining us from universities in Germany and the USA and South Africa and Georgia. And it's also open for MM students at an extra cost if they have at least one year work experience. These are the current specializations that will be coming in 2019. We have in two categories. The blue are what we call our generalist specializations, which are topics that are current and interesting for all MBA students. Then we have the green ones, which we call our industry-related specializations. These are more focused and designed for people that either work in these sectors, public sector, sports, healthcare, or wine, or have an incentive to move into one of these sectors. The green specializations do have one additional admissions process where we ask you to submit your motivation for joining these specializations. But all nine run at the same time, and you can also come back after you graduate and continue to take other specializations for lifelong learning. So this brings us to our overview, but what's most important is the questions that you would have for us as we've gone through the presentation. As I said, many of these things you've probably seen or researched on your own as you've been preparing for your studies, but we want to then make ourselves available to see how we can add value. And this presentation will be available to you after the webinar is over with. So I have Dave back with us, and we, there's two ways you can ask questions. The most important way is under the chat at the bottom of the screen. You can see a chat box where you can type in your question and we will either respond to you in chat or we can respond here vocally to anybody that's interested. So, so Dave, I, I know I gave a pretty uh, dry presentation there about our curriculum and um, MSM, but maybe if you want to add anything as the students are looking to see if there's any chat, or anything that they want to contribute and ask about today's presentation? Um, <clears throat> I think Oliver uh, covered all of the major details. You mentioned that I'd uh, been with the company today, and it's a pretty good example of what MSM is trying to do and the importance of where we are within our region in Europe, because um, we need to be integrated with companies. First of all, to understand that our course is relevant to them, and, and so it keeps current. But also, in fact, what I was doing today with a company called Arian, 
was establishing an internship so that at the end of the course, they would have place, internship places for four to five of our students once they've graduated. And the concept was to use people for three to six months um, as an agile team working within the company. The beauty of this is as well as you work at the end of your uh, course, and you stop being a student, you can actually apply for a year, another a year's permit, a slightly different permit, which is organized so you can actually try and find a job. So the way we're trying to work with the team, this company is that you can work as an internship, working on an agile project with them, at the same time looking at other companies uh, for a job as well. So it seems to be a win-win. Uh, and of course, the important thing about an internship after you've graduated is that it goes on your CV and it's relevant and, and has real meaning in the area of wherever you might be looking for a job. Yeah. Now, it reminds me of an important point, which I should have included in the presentation, but let's cover that now. Let's talk about the Netherlands, and that is another one of our unique selling features. For those of you that, that are attending this webinar, I'm not sure if you're looking at other schools outside of the Netherlands, but one thing that I appreciate about the Netherlands is Netherlands is a country that understands that it only gets better if smart people stay here after they graduate. We know there's a lot of countries in the world where after you finish your studies, the country says, thank you for studying here, now please go home. And Netherlands is just the opposite. So the Netherlands provides an opportunity for you after you finish your studies to stay for one year, which in Dutch is called the Zoekjaar or the search year, in which you can stay and look for work and opportunity. And the way, one way that the Netherlands makes it easy for you is during that year, you're allowed to work freely. And to stay and work afterwards, all you need to do is find an employer that wants to hire you. The Netherlands has set a minimum salary and if an employer says, I want to hire this person at this salary, the Netherlands doesn't require anything else. They say, look, if there's an employer that wants you, we will make that happen. And you can get the work permit very easily. So you have a year to find that matchup. And this, the internship makes that easier because a lot of jobs come through internships where they get a chance to work with you and say, look, I want this person. This person's worth having here on the team. And so that's a really great opportunity. So the Netherlands wants you to find work. We want you to find work. We have a great career services office that works with these companies to bring them in to meet you, to interact with them during your year of studies, and then help you find that job when you finish your studies. I think one other point I'd like to bring out is you know, why uh, MSM. Oliver mentioned our, um, our outreach over 50 years and globalization and being international. They're not buzzwords at MSM, where there are many other places. We haven't just added it on. We've been doing it for real. In fact, I was just up in one of our, um, our lecturers' uh, offices the other day with a map of Africa. And he was showing me where he'd been working and not just teaching, but on major projects as well. But I, I, I'm new to MSM. I've only been here a, a couple of months and I've come from uh, industry, commercial industry, working in Germany. And I can say as a person responsible for large teams that we're not only looking for the management skills from somebody that comes with an MBA or a master's in management, but we, we're not really looking for, for managers, what we're looking for is leaders. And those skills, often called soft skills, I actually think they're quite hard, um, but they come, that emotional maturity comes from experience and broadening your horizons. And that's the beauty of a course here at MSM, because you will be exposed to so many people from so many different cultures and also uh, for the MBA programs in particular, people who have been working in other industries. And that broadening will develop you into a much better leader. And that's a key selling point for you when you're looking for a job. Uh, but so you can leverage the, the management skills that you've learned here to quickly accelerate your career once you've actually got that job. Or if you return back to your company, the, that your bosses can say, wow, that really was quite something that this person you've you know, that we saw a year ago has come back and, and is giving me so much more than I'd appreciated. And this is the sort of selling point that we have. So Maria, I see that you've asked a couple questions for us. Let me highlight those. First off, you say, how do we define an internship? Well, an internship here in Europe is a pretty specific phrase. That means that you're working less than full time in some cases, but you're working at a reduced salary, at a minimum salary to at least cover some of your basic living expenses. But it means that it's not the full-time job. It's usually going to be time-limited for three to six months. Mm -hmm. It's a chance for you to exercise in a business what you've been working on 
in class. So it's designed to be closely related to what you've been learning in school and uh, in your program and to get to know the industry a little bit better and compare it to what you've seen in class. I don't know how else you would define internship. No, I, I think that, that works. Actually, Maria, you had a, a second question about how we match the candidate to the internship. To be honest with you, um, we have open dates where we work with industry, but it's not our job to, to sort of match make, as it were, other than physically get the people here to meet you. Actually, we're expecting future leaders to be able to sell themselves and go up and present, you know, go up to somebody who's here and introduce themselves. And if, and if I have five individuals that I know that are going on this, this internship, that's exactly what they did. The company came here as part of our corporate day. People were impressed. In fact, it's quite interesting because I don't think any of them expected to be interested in doing uh, an internship within the healthcare industry, which this company is. But they had a sort of a light bulb moment and thought, well, that's really interesting. And because they took the trouble to go up to the person who is presenting afterwards and then follow up with a phone call. They're the ones that are in front of uh, these people for interviews for internships. And so that's the other point is that, that we're not guaranteeing an internship. We know there's five places, for instance, for this company, but you still have to win that slot. The companies are expecting intelligent people with a lot of get up and go. And let me reinforce that with the idea of our size, because we haven't, you, from a distance, if you're attending the webinar, it's hard to tell the difference between many schools you're looking at. We're actually uh, happy to be a small, intimate school. We have, uh, in our MBA classes, we have less than 40 students. Same thing in our MM classes. So around 30 to 40 students is our typical class size. It also means that from the outside industries, that we, they look at us and they see everyone. They see all of our students. And so when we have companies come in and present, when we have internship opportunities, it really is a personal experience. And so it's not like you're on a list of 100 hoping to get one or two available slots. We have opportunities for all of our students. It means the same thing. One of the other questions here is about career services and finding work. Um, the career, the companies that come in and visit really enjoy seeing all of our students. And the same thing in class. As a lecturer, I'm able to get to know all the students. You're not a number that's lost. And so the matching the candidates with internships, finding jobs, it's a very personal experience. We get to know you from the time you apply. We look at your CV, our career center throughout your studies is looking at you and seeing which companies might match. And then we contact the companies and help you get matched, either through an internship or through career opportunities at the end of your study. Uh, Hajar, you have a question a little bit different about extracurricular activity. Well, in fact, like the internship, we, we have a lot of self-organized things. Students go out and find internships as well as ones that we look for. Students create their own extracurricular activities as well as ones that we offer. We create uh, extracurricular activities more related to the academic program. We have guest lecturers that come in. We have inter interactions with other students from other programs, with, with drinks or networking opportunities, after movie nights or things that we organize. We also see that the students self-organize a lot of their own opportunities. We're also in a university city. MSM is one of three higher education institutions, at least in Maastricht. So there's close to 30,000 students in Maastricht. And so outside of MSM, there are many opportunities for uh, extracurricular activities. So you're not limited just by what we offer, but you'll have a hard time doing all the opportunities that are available yeah. in town, that I know. And, <clears throat> and we're very closely related with the, the university, German University in Aachen as well. So there's not only things that are going on here, but obviously with our sister university, if I may say that, mm -hmm. that's only 35 kilometers away from here. Uh, an example of, um, things uh, outside of work. My first week here, it was Sustainability Week, if I remember, in Europe. Mm -hmm. And the students organized a whole big dinner with a, at a sustainable restaurant, and that was a big social event that we had. Uh, and again, it's, it's, as Oliver has said, this getting up and organizing things for yourselves or bringing people in, well, that's just part of normal business, really. We expect you to be able to have enough energy and, and capacity to be able to organize that. And that was also a selling point. I mean, you can use some of these social events to bring people in from outside. And that not only helps MSM, but it also gives you the opportunity to have exposure with people outside 
in industry or just in the local community. Yeah, we had a sustainable movie night a couple months ago that was organized by one of our MBA students from Russia that was in a sustainable organization, not related to MSM, but then we agreed to host the movie night in, mm -hmm. our, in our theater. Linda, you have a question about work and study. The short answer is no. In the full-time program, it is truly a full-time program. There's no room in your schedule for study. As well, the Dutch government, as much as they want you to work in the Netherlands after you finish your studies, they want you to concentrate in your studies while you are a student. So it is very difficult to find work. Your employers are limited with work permits while you're a student, but then they make up for it for the moment you graduate with a ZUKIAR and you can seek employment anywhere during that ZUKIAR. Um, Dave, I'll let you answer John's question about how master management differs from the MBA, especially in terms of career prospects. Um, the key part to the difference between the Masters of Management and the MBA is uh, the work experience. So in effect, you could flip from doing your bachelor's degree and coming straight in onto a Masters of Management program, whereas it's, it's a requirement for our accreditation. Uh, it's really fundamental that a minimum of three years and on average, I think Oliver, you said five years. Mm -hmm. I remember that, that's, that's what we, we want. So those, that's, a, that's the major difference. Um, but we realize that uh, companies are really looking for quality people at master's level to be able to think and apply skills at a master's level. And there's a fundamental difference between bachelor's and master's level. And so the master's of management bridges that gap for those of you that want to try and and go to a company and hit at a certain level, but you don't necessarily have those three years of work experience, five years of work experience that we'd have for the MBA. Yeah, I, I would reinforce that uh, in, another question is which is easier to find work, MBA or master's, which creates to find work quicker. Uh, they, they're not comparable in that way. There's some employers that are looking for somebody younger in their career, and they also expect to pay a lower salary. And then there's others that are looking for more senior professionals at a higher salary range. So I would say that that's the major difference is what your expectations might be of the level of authority and level of salary at your first job. But you may find that perhaps a master's student maybe finds a job easier because the expectations might be lower from a company. Um, it just depends on which companies you're courting and which skills you're bringing to the table. So both of them, and one of the other questions would be about the, the length of time to find jobs. In general, we have historically a 90% placement rate during that first year. For those that want to stay in the Netherlands and work, we have a very high uh, percentage of, of placement of finding work. And I think from our last, when I talked to our career services uh, coordinator last time, everybody from last year's graduating class that wanted to find work has found meaningful, good work that they're pleased with in the region. So one of the things that's important for us, let me bring this over to another question about application and GRE. When we are looking for students to join our program, the GRE is great. We like GRE and GMAT because it shows us that you're motivated to join, that you're taking this seriously. But we do not judge our students by the numbers. We feel that GRE, and even in some cases, your transcripts are backwards looking. So if you feel like your transcript from your bachelor's degree isn't quite what you would want, show us your CV. We want to see progress. We want to see movement because that gives us an indication of where your future is. And that's important for us, both in terms of grad success story and finding a job after graduation. So the GRE is something which we look at but it's not the most important part of our application. No, I think it's important to perhaps point out as well the leveling courses that we do. So again, that brings everyone up to the same standard before actually starting the course. And so if you are worried that perhaps with the standardization test, you might not have made it, well, we, if we've gone through the administrative process, I mean, given you a, um, yes, you're accepted on the course, subject to obviously completing the, the leveling courses, then that, that, the whole idea of that, of course, is to bring you up so that everyone is hitting the start on day one with the required standards. So that should cover that element. Yeah, and John, in your question, the CV can compensate for poor scores. We look at multiple dimensions when we're doing admissions. We don't just think of you as an academic creature. And I know a lot of people, we have very successful students with great careers that maybe they didn't get it until they finished their bachelor's. They got C's, they weren't really motivated, 
and then they found the motivation afterwards. And we don't want that pre-motivated time to cripple you, but we do need to see them progress. If somebody has great scores and a great GRE, then we can already have an indication of, of capability, but we can offset poor scores if we do see that something happened, a light went on afterwards, and that we can reflect it in recommendations. Yeah. It's actually interesting when you, if you look at statistics for CEOs, how many of them were late starters. The only thing I would add to that, though, I think, mm -hmm. Oliver, is important that we stress that mm -hmm. this is a quality course. This is not an easy course. And it's really beholden to us when we accept students that, that we have that quality, even if, if we see it in the CV, perhaps you didn't get the scores. We owe that to the rest of the students who are coming on the course, that mm -hmm. the rest of the members of that course are quality as well because you're not just operating as an individual. Actually, many of the uh, subjects that we do and the tasks you're given will be group exercises. And the last thing you want if you're, if you're tr trying to learn a difficult course is to be carrying somebody who we let on the course that should never have been here. So it's really quite important that, that you realize this is, this is not an easy course, um, but we do take into account late starters, but you can pretty much see straight away on somebody's CV, oh wow, okay. That's a quality person. And we do interviews, Skype interviews, or first to first, face to face with every student in class. And one of the questions I'm asking myself when I'm interviewing, is this somebody that I would put in class with somebody else? Will the students be happy I accepted this person and said, thank you for bringing them mm -hmm. into my group? Or will the students come back to me later and say, why is this person here? And that's not based on GRE, it's not based on transcript. It's based on motivation and internal drive, in addition to the quality that we see from the previous background. So it doesn't, grades are important, but we have ways if we see a late starter to help you get into the program too. Uh, scholarships, we have from Ika and John, two questions about scholarships. We have two forms of scholarships at MSM. And scholarships are important for us because we, as a nonprofit foundation, it's important for us to make this education available to as many people as possible that are qualified. So the first form of scholarship we have is called our Dean's Development Fund. And this is based solely on uh, nationality. So those that are from developing world get uh, predefined scholarships, which you can find at the website. Those are from the, the more developed countries will have a slightly smaller scholarship. And then those that have the advantage of being from the most developed countries do not qualify for the Dean's Development Scholarships. But then we also have merit-based scholarships. These are scholarships based on your individual status. So those fall into academic uh, quality. If you have had exceptional grades or an exceptional GMAT score or GRE score, there's one scholarship. There's scholarships uh, based on those that are entrepreneurs, those who work in the public sector, that have given their career to the greater good and work in the public sector. Uh, but you can find a list of all the scholarships at the website. If you go to the page for the program and scroll to the bottom, you'll see a a tab for scholarships that are very transparent for you to see there. And for John, your your question, scores are important for some of the scholarships, and it'll specify for which scholarships the scores are important to look at. Um, why don't you ta tackle um, this one from Hajar if you want? Um, yeah, Hajar's asked about non-traditional mode of learning, and why would you recommend our schools opposed to others in, in the method and the way we're teaching? Um, well, I've already said how linked up we are with, with businesses and making sure the relevance of our course, so it's not just an academic course. It's, you know, a certificate on the wall is really nice, but I actually want you to be able to apply it in business and make a difference. Uh, and of course, a key part of, our, of MSM is this is sustainability in the mm -hmm. way that we've, we've been working for all these years. So again, I mentioned before that, that we don't only want people that are capable of, of you applying the correct techniques, but we want them to do the right thing at the right time, sustainable and you know, all the ethics and things like that. That's a key part of what we do. Um, but I would also say we have this, this way of thinking that we're here as mentors as well as lecturers. This includes me, I might be the director of global mm -hmm. education, but I'll crawl over hot coals to, to help anybody that, uh, that we can do. Um, but it goes beyond the point that when you're the student, Oliver mentioned, uh, 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 program of you know, 20,000 20, people, 20, alumni, yeah. alumni. Uh, and that's a really live group of people, which is really important as part of our networking. But also, after you graduated, you know, if somebody is trying to start a business and needs advice, 
that's what we're here for. It's through life learning and you know, through, through life mentorship. That's a mm -hmm. fundamental part. And I, I'd like to think that's the key differentiator between ourselves and other education establishments. And Hajar, let me give you an example of my own class in, in marketing. My marketing class doesn't have an exam. It has a final assignment where you take a real company of your choosing and apply the concepts I've taught in my marketing class. And then your grade will be based on how I see you applying the concepts taught. The actual class delivery is based on half, less than half actually is lecturing. It's a, a great deal about you reading a case before class, us bringing in real life examples, and then us discussing those and how we work in groups to apply the lessons taught that day. Another way that I would say that we're a bit innovative is we do have uh, most of our lecturers have PhDs, but that's not the way we choose lecturers. We choose lecturers based on their real life business experience. We choose lecturers based on their teaching performance, the feedback that they have from students. And so we listen to the students, we listen to the market, and we create and update classes every year based on what's happening in the market. Yeah, and I think I'd, I'd go further to that. Um, I just attended the specialization for our sports management uh, people. And it was quite interesting watching the team um, there because many of them had been professional athletes in their youth, so they couldn't actually mm -hmm. study. The classic late starters, but it had, had been extremely good sportsmen, and then were moving into management, but needed those skills, those key management skills, to actually um, not just take them on, but actually grow an organisation uh, and that has real impact. Um, and so we, you can actually see just how useful it is the way we interact and the way we interact with companies. Because as well in, uh, in part of their specialization, that you know, answers one of the questions about innovative design. We've got a sports specialization that's actually working for uh, as part of their module to try and almost provide a, a mini consultancy team mm -hmm. for an issue they've got with the launch of a new product and, and you know, innovative design and marketing of that product. So uh, Elena, I hope that answers your question here as well about how, how we interrelate with companies not just around the masters, but within the whole of the region. Yeah. And also for Elena's question, yes, we do offer Dutch lessons. Uh, although Dutch, Netherlands is one of those countries where everybody speaks English and it's quite comfortable language here. And you can also get most high level jobs without needing Dutch. Having some exposure to Dutch is a big benefit. So we do provide Dutch lessons that are available to you through, during the year of your study. And as far as innovation and innovative design, I do want to point out that of the 70 credits in the MBA and in the 60 credits MM, there's a chunk of credits which is devoted to your final assignment. That's either a business consultancy project, a business plan, or a thesis. And that's where we should encourage students to go out into the Netherlands and find businesses that they want to work with. And if you're interested in innovation and design, then we can help you find the companies that you may want to use for business consultancy projects. You can focus on that and add that to your CV. And yes, we do have contacts, not just in Maastricht. Even though we're based here, we consider ourselves to be a European institution and we have contacts throughout the Netherlands and Germany and Belgium. Um, there's a question here from Maria about how to prepare for interviews. How do you, how do you get to interviews? Actually, it's part of a personal development plan, but also the corporate week. Uh, those subjects are covered in great detail. Uh, and believe it or not, it's e even in the Netherlands, it can be quite different to my background living in Germany and working in Germany. And the requirements, and definitely the CV requirement is, is, is subtly different. So we get involved as much as we can with that. In terms of preparing for interviews, well, again, it's like any job. You need to uh, find out about who, who's going to be interviewing you, learn about the company, be prepared to show that you've studied in depth about the company you're going to, to impress upon somebody why they, they should involve you as a, perhaps a leader of a team within their company. Even as an intern, you can still be a team leader. But, and we see that, but the sorts of people you expect, the ones who are organizing the social events, the obvious you know, people yeah. out of the classroom, and they're the ones that are doing really well. So we give you those opportunities to shine, but it's up to you to take a step forward and shine. And if I may, Dave, that's one of these classic questions. I think there's two possible answers for this. You answer the most important one, which is an interview for after uh, your studies. Uh, I read this to also mean for the application for the program. Uh, that's much easier to answer for if you get to that point of the application process to join one of our programs, 
the interview should be the easiest thing because it's just talk about yourself. We we just ask things that you've already told us in your application about your CV, about your motivation letter. It's just more chance for us to get a feel for your level of English, for your comfort level in, in speaking and responding to questions, uh, maybe unexpected questions about yourself and your future. But you don't need to really prepare for the interview. Just be yourself. And do it. It's just a conversation that we have with you. Yeah, in fact, I would say even if it wasn't MSM and I was interviewing you for my last company, I'd say that as well because there's nothing worse if you employ somebody who pretended to be somebody they weren't and you get a mismatch. And very quickly, you learn after two weeks, you, everyone's wasted their time, it just wasn't worth it. So that's key information. I think important as well for you, if you're, if you're watching this and you're non-European, is the cutoff dates for applications. In fact, I've just extended it today. So by the end of the week is the cutoff date. So if you are thinking about our programs mm -hmm. and you're non-European, because we have to get all the administration, as visas, et cetera, uh, sorted, then the end of this week is the cutoff. So you need to start applying. We are, we are fortunate that, it, that, again, the Netherlands is a big help. It, the student visa application process is very uh, efficient and straightforward, and we work closely with the immigration office, and so we collect the documents on their behalf, but we still need to allow enough time for the process to work. So uh, if you're interested in attending, you still have time, even if you're from a non-European country. Uh, start your application, go to campus, C-A-M-P-U-S dot M-S-M dot N-L or go to our website, M-S-M dot N-L and click apply now and start going through the application process. Since we know the timing is critical for many of you, we will process your application once it's completed within a matter of 24 to 48 hours, as long as our staff is here and able to look at that. We'll organize things as quickly as we can in the coming two weeks to help you get through the process. If you have questions, our admissions office We'll help you with upload of documents for documents required and for which documents absolutely need to be there now and which documents we can wait for or accept with just a scan. So just work with us, let us know, and we'll help you through the process. But we thank you for taking the time to join us today. And we hope that we've answered all your questions. I think so, because we've ticked them off. So we've at least answered the questions you have written down. If you have any other questions, please write to us. Uh, Talk to the people you've been talking to already in preparation for this webinar, and we hope to meet you soon here in Maastricht. Yeah, and um, I'd say our recruiting team have actually been upstairs watching uh, this webinar as well, and they're aware that I've shifted the deadline uh, this week, so they're ready for your applications. But I can't stress enough, it's, the door is closing, so if you're wanting to apply and you're non-European, you need to be applying this week. Okay, that's Thank it you. for us. Uh, I'll let Access MBA. You can take it from here and do any closing statements as you do. Yeah, thank you for joining us and being so active with so many interesting questions. I would like to thank our presenters for interesting presentation and for taking the time to answer all your questions. Again, if, if you have any additional questions, please write back to us and we'll make sure that your questions uh, uh, reach um, MSN. Uh, you will also receive uh, a link with the recording for the entire webinar. Wish you a luck in your academic journey and bye everyone.